A while ago I bought 10 of these for a buck a piece. I think I can part with one for the sake of my grail quest. Hey oh, is this Tim from Haas of Cards? Hey, it's Scott from Reindeer Studios. How goes it, buddy? Awesome. Get it? Awesome? Yeah, I'm pretty hilarious. Hey, I know you're a man with exquisite taste in baseball teams. I've got a special card just for you. You know I hate to give up my Indians cards, but I have a PSA 9 1989 score rookie and traded Joey Bell. It's pretty fancy. It also doubles as a fake phone. You interested? Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking $40,000. No. You can't blame a guy for trying, right? Okay, how about a $60 bill? Still no, okay. How about $60 and a markerdoodle of Albert giving Fernando Vina the old what for? Vina. Oh, this is just like the play. All right, sweet Tim, you got a deal, sir. Hey, yo, superstars, welcome back to the quest for my holy grail card. This is my series where I'm trying to sell off worthless cards for exorbitant amounts of money so that I can eventually buy my grail card a T206 Cy Young portrait. But to make it work, I'm including some original art. Today, we're drawing Albert Bell from my pal Tim from Haas of Cards. Tim, like me, is a huge Guardians fan, and you would think that I'd really enjoy making Indians art, but that means I have to part with it, and I have to part with an Indians card. We've done Manny Ramirez and Larry Doby and now Albert Bell, and it's like you guys are cutting out a piece of my heart. Settle down, Scott. Eyes on the prize, buddy. Okay, breathe. Pet the kitty. Pet the kitty. Okay, okay, okay. Be cool. I'm sorry. And yeah, I'm totally kidding. Tim is an awesome guy. He totally deserves one of my 10 PSA graded Joey Bell rookies. And he totally deserves this doodle. Totally. Really. Let's see, uh, let's talk about this play first. Albert was obviously very volatile and short fused and had more than a few rather colorful moments. Chasing down trick-or-treaters with his car, throwing balls at fans and photographers, smash clubhouse thermostats, yelling obscenities at reporters, the corked bat, and the infamous Fernando Vina incident. In the third inning during this particular game, first base coach Dave Nelson gave Albert a little talking to after he didn't try very hard to break up the double play when running from first to second. So a few innings later, Albert takes out Vina with a mighty forearm shiver, preventing Vina from throwing out Eddie Murray. Albert claims he was just following orders. Surprisingly, the umps claimed it wasn't a dirty play, but the game did get pretty ugly with beanballs, bench-clearing brawls, and body slams. MLB gifted Albert and some others involved with three-game suspensions. For lack of a better transition, I want to jump into name changes. Joey changed his name to Albert, and I don't think I've really addressed my feelings on the Indians Guardians name change. I'm not a hot take guy, and I like to mull things over, you know, but uh, Albert first. Albert is his real name, but he went by Joey. In uh, 1990, he went to get help for alcohol issues. After receiving treatment, he decided to leave alcoholic Joey behind and go by his birth name, Albert. In the past, I would jokingly refer to him as Don't Call Me Joey, but I think the reasoning for the name change was good and commendable. Even a troubled soul like Albert Bell can be good and commendable. I also think the reasons behind the Guardian's name change are good and commendable, and you may disagree with me and that's fine. I know it's a touchy subject, it does not make us mortal enemies, but a lot of you have asked what my feelings are on the subject, and there's a lot of history behind the Indian's name and I get that. The name change does not dilute my fondest memories of the franchise. My biggest beef has always been with Chief Wahoo. I liked him when I was about 10, the same way I liked Garfield cartoons, but ever since then I thought he was rather stupid. Garfield and Chief Wahoo. Had they just ditched the Chief and kept the name, I would have been fine with that. But um, the problem with the Indians name, besides not being the correct nomenclature, was that no Ohio tribes really wanted to associate with the team, I think because of their reluctance to get rid of Chief Wahoo for so long. If they had the support of a Native American tribe, like many sports teams do, they would have been fine, but the Indians weren't honoring anybody with their nickname. The Lewis Sock Alexis thing is kind of a convenient myth. They were actually named by newspaper men who were trying to emulate their recently successful Boston Braves. 
Is Guardians a little generic sounding? Maybe, but I'm getting used to it. Uh, were there other names I liked better? Yeah, but uh, there were names that I liked a lot less. And I've always really liked the Art Deco Guardian statues, and I can totally get behind naming the team after public works of art. But I'm handling the name this way. If I'm talking about the franchise as a whole or the current roster, they're the Guardians. If I'm talking about a player or team from 1914 to 2021, then I can say Indians. I'm sure I'll slip up quite a few times in the near future, but it's all good. And I could go on and on about this topic, but I won't because it is time for a terrible joke. So during the pandemic, you know, everyone in Cleveland was taking the whole social distancing thing very seriously. No one was even down by the lake. It was eerie. <laughs> All right, all right. There's Albert giving Vina the what for. Bang, poom, pow. Three blips closer to my Cy Young card today. Thanks, Tim, for asking me to do this. I'm happy to um, share my preciouses with you. My preciouses. I'll be okay, really. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I apologize if I spent too much time on my little soapbox. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell. Get it? Bell? Okay, we'll catch you next time.